have any two people here can come um, gentlemen can come the difference between any two people watch this please everyone the difference between any two people the difference in the quality of their lives the difference in the results that they command the difference between their relevance as far as the program of God is concerned and the quality of their lives is principally dependent please listen not on their backgrounds necessarily not on their educational qualifications necessarily not on their connections necessarily the ultimate determinant of the quality of a man's life here on earth is his ideology your ideology you hear me teach this all the time the principal determinant of the quality of your life here on earth is your ideology I don't care what else you have if you have an ideology that is not consistent with the ways of God it's called the mind of Christ if you can pay the price and get what the Bible calls the mind of Christ then you are qualified to live life to its fullest based on the definition of heaven and even on the definition of earth. It's impossible to fail in life when you have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is God's ideology. The way he thinks, his perspective, his thought pattern, and so through the teachings, I know that we have a lot of impartations and all of that, but impartations become irrelevant when there is no well-constructed channel that can permit them to find expression to the fullest. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is like a dam. Your mindset is like the pipe that is properly channeled for its delivery. Are we together now? No matter how anointed you are, if your mindset, the build up of your ideology is not well constructed so as to allow the fullness of heaven find expression through you, your Christian experience will still be buried irrespective of the dimension of God's glory that you carry. So I want to start off tonight by talking to us about the excellency of a transformed mind. We're going to talk about a number of things. It's a training. We are under serious training. It's an apostolic and a prophetic training. Right? The excellency, the superiority of a transformed mind. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world. The Greek word here is aeon. The thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this age. Do not allow yourself to come into alignment with that kind of ideology. Then it says, but be transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Permit it. Allow it. Allow your mind pass through a system, a spiritual system that will edit you will upgrade you will prune you and bring you to a point where your mind you not only have the word of god but you become the expression of the living logos the word logos or the word um logos is not just the it's not written word it's from the word that conveys the thoughts of a man so when we say christ is the living logos the living word that means that Jesus Christ was the accurate expression of everything the Father was thinking. Everything God was thinking, Jesus was living it out. That's what made him the living logos. And God's ultimate desire, hear me, God's desire ultimately 
is not for you to become a chief dispenser of revelation is that you become so full of the word that you become an epistle yourself your life becomes an expression of the living logos that your mindset your life is so aligned that you become an expression of the thought of god for you at time so god's ultimate desire is not to have exceptional preachers god's ultimate desire is to bring us to a point where there is such excellency in our ideologies these two gentlemen perceive life from different standpoints and the principal motivation that sponsors their perception is their mindset are we together now Bless you. your ideology i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and we, we touched on a few things that i taught them yesterday i just felt very um impressed in my spirit by the holy spirit to incorporate some of those things your ideology is the principal motivator of your responses the way you respond to life the way you respond to god please pay attention the way you respond to situations and circumstances are as a result of your mindset your ideology your mentality Your ideology also sponsors your interpretation. The way you interpret happenings in your life. The way you interpret the occurrences. The way you interpret success. The way you interpret failure. The way you interpret um, people. The way you interpret God. Is a resultant effect of your mindset. Your ideology. There are people, for instance, who are under a lot of pressure over their physical appearance, dressing well, um, getting a designer watch, a designer cloth, you know. They are, they are so conscious about those things. That consciousness is stimulated by an ideology. Is that true? Among other reasons, an ideology that informs them that on the strength of wearing expensive things you are perceived to be valuable are we together now so that ideology stimulates a passion for one thing a lot of things there are people for instance who reject prosperity and embrace poverty because according to their ideology simplicity is the same as being poor so in a bid to respond to a desire to be simple are we are we together now they they reject anything that will make them blessed you are helplessly a slave of your ideology you are helplessly a slave of your ideology your life literally revolves along the plane of your ideology and therefore if god wants to step into your life and upgrade you if god wants to bring you to a point where you are so built that you allow his spirit the fullness of his essence to find expression in you then you must be able to submit to him and allow him to change your ideology our ideologies are built by many factors culture for instance I've, I've, I've taught that here you can get the teachings culture have shaped our mindsets culture have shaped our perceptions we see things from a particular vista in physics there's what we call refraction right i, I taught the school of ministry students yesterday and i felt a need to just bring that example there is what we call refraction when you when you study physics there's even what they call a refractive index is that true um you have sorry those of us who are not science based i apologize but it's a very simple explanation that on the strength of having a glass block or anything of that nature you look through it 
and you can see an object it will appear in a distance and in a form that may not be the way it is originally and that is on the strength of what you are looking at let me use an example that all of us can relate with how many of you have seen cars that um, they write something little or the side mirror objects appear larger or smaller than they actually are is that true so the, what you are looking at in that mirror is not exactly the way it is. You may see it bigger than it really is or smaller than it really is. Are you getting the point now? So your interpretation is based on your perception. You must understand this to be successful in life. You must rise to a point where you have what I call a superior ideology. An ideology that is so aligned to the mind of Christ. Many of us do not care about our ideologies. And we labor in the place of prayer. We labor in the place of fasting. We assimilate the word. And then there is such a bank of spiritual treasure. But there is no platform for it to find expression. Because the realities of the spirit are, are like, like power banks. But they, they are dependent on a transformed mind to fully find expression. The degree to which you have the mind of Christ is the degree to which you can allow heavenly things find expression through you. This defines our possibilities in the kingdom. Hallelujah. So you must realize that your ideology is very important. I keep challenging our ideologies because if your ideology does not change, nothing will change in your life, I guarantee you. Not even education will change you. Not marriage will change you. Everywhere you go, you go with your ideology. Anything you do, you do from the standpoint of your ideology. There are some of us, for instance, come if this gentleman look up please everyone if you can if this gentleman has an ideology of inferiority he feels very bad about himself it doesn't matter how he got that ideology did you know that if you look at this guy and say wow your suit is beautiful you're looking sharp he will interpret your commendation on the strength of his ideology and he will think it's a diplomatic way of mocking him is that true whereas that's supposed to be a, 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 I mean a good commendation that he should receive with thanksgiving but then it comes and is interpreted on the lens of his ideology and he goes back hating you for doing something right are we together now our mindsets are very important many of us are fighting battles that do not exist today battles that our minds created Many of us are hating people today who do not even know. Our minds created that hatred. There are people under stress that should never be under stress. There are people dying under high blood pressure. Preachers dying because there is a parameter that their ideology has put together. I know men of God who suffer all the time, harass members to try to bring congregations because to them the few ones you have a crowd like this is a representation of your anointing are we together now and so they get deceived and rather than focusing to build the people they do not know that in a congregation like this success is not measured generally you pick people one by one to ascertain the extent of the man of god's contribution to their life you can never generalize a successful congregation if you want to know how successful koinonia is you have to pick men at random and then speak to them on the matters of the kingdom and find out their individual degrees of comprehension when you gauge the average on their of their understanding it represents the extent of my teaching not the crowd are you seeing that now yeah i learned this early in life so there are pastors who are under pressure and that wrong ideology motivates them into thinking the more I bring in men of God from abroad, the more I bring in this and that, the more there are conferences, the more there are conventions, the more crowds will come. 
responding sincerely but a slave to their ideologies there are pastors and pastor's wives who are so insecure if the pastor buys a particular kind of jeep nobody buys that kind of jeep again because his concept of honor is that you stand alone are we together now there are pastors who the moment they find out that other younger ministers their training are rising up they create a spiritual teaching that ensures that they remain at a level and never rise up are we together now so their ideology is informing the activities in their ministry there are pastors for instance who think respect and honor in ministry is when you see a man of god and then you lie down i'm, I'm not against uh, all of that but i used to know uh, um, one one very foolish pastor some years ago who made it a, a rule for his members to kneel down when they see him no no literally i'm not i'm not joking anywhere in the market in the rain once you see him coming you kneel down now now you see listen listen don't laugh there are still people doing it today there are churches where the man of god is so insecure the moment there is anything that looks like a coup against him they they go as far as even flogging members are we together now your life revolves around the quality of your ideology one person will be celebrating something and another one is destroying it because both of them are looking at the same thing from different perspectives and so as i challenge you every week part of the things that the holy ghost is doing is to be able to create a divorce between us and the ideologies that have kept us limited listen many of us think that to make spiritual men all you have to talk about is the seven rivers that are in heaven or the plain describing the things that are around the white throne believe me believe me when i tell you this you don't build people that way you must give people a holistic building that makes them capable in every ramification the moment you teach people and your your paradigm to them is lopsided the limitation of your spiritual understanding reflects on them have you seen churches like that men of prayer but broke people they are reflecting the man of god's bias he has refused to open them up to that dimension or you have a church where people are leaders they are visionaries they are businessmen but they are carnal they are not spiritual at all they are excellent they are exceptional they are reflecting the bias of the man of god and it's my job under god to make sure don't worry guys please except we have more people outside but those here i think they are they are a lot comfortable in so we don't have to bring them out it's cold so i don't think the heat is too much any asthmatic patient you are healed in jesus name hallelujah so you must challenge yourself to contend for an excellent mindset it is lack of an excellent mindset that makes for instance men of god fight themselves because they think respect in ministry or in the kingdom based on their mindset is when you stand alone and outshine others are we together now and so the more a man of god stands in a class where he sustains the capacity to outshine others right and so we compare ourselves with ourselves and the bible says whoever does that is not wise The question now before we even start is are you willing to submit your mindset to be changed listen i really cannot help you if you are unwilling if you are on if you are not malleable enough for your mindset to be transformed i made a decision years ago and that decision still stands anything that is not going to contribute to me manifesting the fullness of the life and the power of god serving the lord with all my heart and blessing my generation is not worth my pursuit i will dump it including friendships including ideologies about ministry if this for me 
given by God represents the highest level of ministry. And this is the dimension that will produce the greatest efficiency in my life. Then I do not want to improve. I want to stay here for the sake of that optimal delivery. You must be this passionate about God. And you must be passionate enough to submit your mind. Like, like you carry a cloth and you give a dry cleaner. You say, please go and walk on this cloth. Walk on it. How many of you have seen them repaint a car? You've seen them, you know, how, uh, uh, what they call them, the painters, the car painters now. They first take it to a workshop. Is that true? In a bit to paint that car, they can dismantle everything, the lights. Momentarily, the, the, the aesthetics of the car will have to um, be forgotten for a while. You have to remove the bulbs, remove everything. You have to take away the tires. You have to get all of these things and put together. And then you start spraying. And when you spray, you find out that there are little things you have to fix up everything. But the moment you are done and you bring out that car, the value increases. That's what God is doing to us. And so you must submit yourself to learn in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Lay your hands on your head and pray for one minute and say, Lord, everything inside this head that needs to change must change. Lift your voice and pray. Shabbalakatabalara. I'm tired of keeping things in my mind that are responsible for authorizing darkness in my life. I'm tired of holding on to ideologies that are keeping me poor, keeping me powerless, keeping me uh, in lack of character. I am tired of holding on to precepts and ideologies that are making me fail. I am truly, truly determined. Lord, I authorize you to edit my mind, change my ideology.